Welcome to podcast number three of chapter three. We're still on ionic compounds and we are looking at those with polyatomic ions today. So here's a slide I've shown to you before showing you what a polyatomic ion looks like. So there's a few things I'd like you to take note of in here. First off, that all of these have charges. So all of these written here, you can see they are all ions. They all have an ionic charge beside them. They are all um, composed of at least two um, capitals within them. And those capitals are uh, nonmetals. And therefore, they are composed of nonmetals which covalently bond together. But as a group, they still have an ion charge. So if I was to write... Um, the symbol for each of these, you have to make sure you include that subscript. It is a group of atoms. So the group for ammonium is NH4. Here's its ion charge. The group for nitrate is NO3. So when writing the formulas, you have to include these subscripts when writing nitrate. Um, you can't remove that. It has to stay as a group. And here's its ion charge of a negative one. Writing notes in your NOBO, you need to write down that polyatomic ions are ions, which means they have an ionic charge. They are composed of more than one type of atom, and in that they are joined by covalent bonds. So let's look at a few examples, a few more examples. Here's carbonate. It has an ionic charge of negative two. Here's hydroxide. Oxygen covalently bonded with hydrogen, and when grouped in that manner, has a negative one charge. Here is acetate. So this one has a lot of capitals in it. A carbon, three hydrogens, another carbon, and two oxygens. And this entire group has a charge of negative one. So as you can see here, the whole group has a charge. And those charges can be negative. Most of them are negative. And there is one positive one that you need to be aware of. And that is ammonium. And it's NH4 with a charge of plus one. Let's look how these polyatomic ions fit into what we've been looking at in ionic compounds. So positive polyatomic ions, they act like metals. So how have metals been acting in ionic compounds that we've all been, already been studying? So first off, we know that all those metals that we look at in the periodic table, they all have a positive ion charge. Second off, we also look and see that when we're naming, we name the metals first. So they are named first when naming an ion, in an ionic compound. So here's our only positive polyatomic ion. And here's an example of what it would look like bonded in an ionic compound. Here is the, uh, po here's the um, polyatomic ion and here is the nonmetal it's bonded with. We would call this ammonium bromide. Let's look at the negative polyatomic ions. They act like nonmetals. How do nonmetals act? They all have a negative ion charge and they are named second, named second um, when naming them. Here's going to be the key difference between ionic compounds um, that do not have polyatomic ions and ionic compounds that do. We do not change the ending of polyatomic ions. So we do not change the ending. Before, we were always dropping the ending and add, adding IDE. All of these negative polyatomic ions that will be named last, they are all just as they are written on the list of polyatomic ions. So let's walk through a few, a few examples. This is naming ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. First off, you would need to recognize that there is a polyatomic ion. How would you do this? So previously, if we saw two capitals, we knew that that was an ionic compound. Both of these atoms are from the periodic table. Now if we're looking at, and we'll go back to that um, one example we used before, I can see that there are one, two, three capitals. Therefore, if I see three capitals, I know that one has to be a polyatomic ion. So I would look on my polyatomic ion list that is found on page 92 of your textbook and you will always be given it on the back of your periodic table when writing any quiz or any test. Here's again the important part. We do not change the ending of a polyatomic ion. So let's walk through an example. Here is KClO. Okay, so that looks like three atoms bonded together. So if there's three atoms, one has to be a polyatomic ion. If you look through your polyatomic ion list, you will see 
This group here is the like the nonmetals. These are the negatively charged. And this here, as we know in the periodic table, is potassium. So when naming this, I would write potassium. And on my polyatomic ion list, this here is listed as hypochlorite. And again, we don't change the ending. We leave it as it says within the, period, within the polyatomic ion list. I'm going to do these first two examples with you, and then I'm going to ask you to go through, pause the video and go through the next two. So again, looking at this, I can see one, two, three capitals. There must be a polyatomic ion list. Looking on page 92, I would see that, oh, okay, PO4 is a polyatomic ion. So I would go back to my periodic table and ask myself, what is NA? So NA is my metal, and we know that that is sodium. And on my polyatomic ion list, this PO4 is phosphate. And that is my final answer. That is my name for this ionic compound that contains a polyatomic ion. Looking at this next one, I see one, two, three capitals. One must be a polyatomic ion. Looking at the list, PO3 is the polyatomic ion. AL is from the periodic table, so the name for this is aluminum phosphite. Okay, I'd like you to pause the video and try these C and D example on your own and come back and check your answers. Here are the answers for C and D, hoping you got the right ones. I've just taken a quick picture here of the page 92 of your textbook, the polyatomic ion list, and I want you to look for a pattern in the endings of the polyatomic ions. So as you can see that most of the polyatomic ions, they end in an A-T-E or an I-T-E. Now there are a few exceptions to those rules. And here are the exceptions to those rule, rules. Cyanide, hydrogen sulfide, and hydroxide. They end in IDE, and you're going to get comfortable with those just the more practice we do at naming um, ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. So now we're going to look at writing the formula for ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions. So the same steps as before. Our first step is to find the symbols. The second step is to balance the ion charges in which we went through three methods. We went through the teeter-totter method in which you had to balance out the charges. We went through the table method and then we also introduced a cross drop and reduce method. So let's go through an example. So here we're looking at find the formula for sodium sulfate. So I'm going to look up those symbols on, on my periodic table and my polyatomic ion list. Sodium is directly from the periodic table. Its symbol is Na+. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion. And how do I know that? You are going to know that by looking at this ending, A-T-E. A-T-E means it's a polyatomic ion, and it has a charge of negative 2. So a reminder here, this is an entire group of um, atoms joined together, and when they're joined together, they form an ion. So I like to first start off before I even balance the charges, is just write down my symbols, because I need to know that I cannot remove this four here from the S and the O. Otherwise, I am changing the way that I'm changing that this is not a polyatomic ion anymore. So I like to write the symbols, and then to figure out what um, subscripts do I need in there? So let's look at balancing this. I will show you the three different methods, and then in the next slide I will only be using one method. So I'm going to write the symbols Na plus SO4 with a charge of negative 2. I know that I don't want my teeter-totter to be off balance, so therefore I want the total amount of positives to be equal to the total amount of negatives. So they are out of balance right now. If I add on one more sodium, now I have a total of plus 2 on this side. My one sulfate has a charge of negative 2. This is now balanced. Using my table method, I would write the um, ions at the top. So there's my positives and my negatives. I would see that right now a positive 1 is not added to negative 2 to equal 0, so I know I need to change something. So if I add on another sodium, now I have a total of plus 2 in the positive column, and when I add that to the negative 2, that equals 0, and that is now balanced. And our last option to solve this is the cross, drop, and reduce. So cross them, 
drop them, and then reduce if needed. So in all these examples, you can see I needed two sodium atoms to balance out that charge on that sulfate. And here's your chemical formula for sodium sulfate. The question asks, write the formula for potassium phosphite. Looking at this, I'm going to see that this ending is an ITE ending. And therefore, I am going to go directly to the polyatomic ion list, and I'm going to find the symbol. The symbol for phosphite is PO3, and it has an ion charge of negative 3. Potassium is found on the periodic table. It is K, and its charge is plus 1. So, in my teeter-totter method, I want my amount of positives to be equal to my amount of negatives. Right now I have negative 3 and a positive 1. I need both columns to be equal and therefore I am going to add on more potassium. So adding on another potassium, now I'm at a plus 2 in the positive column. Adding on one more potassium, now I am at a total of plus 3 in the positive column. And now I would say they are balanced out. So I'm going to write the symbols I started off with a K and a PO3. I know that I need three of these potassiums in order to balance out that charge on the phosphate. And there is the chemical formula. Again, take note, you can't remove this three. That is part of the whole group of the polyatomic ion. It has to stay as PO3. And one last concept here, how many atoms are within the formula for potassium phosphate? So you can see here, I have three potassiums, I have one phosphorus, and I have three oxygens. So there is a total of seven atoms within this formula. Let's look at another example. Write the formula for iron 2 nitrate. So here we're looking at these Roman numerals again. So I write the symbols. Iron is Fe. This Roman numeral of a 2 tells me that the ionic charge for iron is plus 2. Nitrate, notice the ending. It's an ATE. So I look on the polyatomic ion list and I can see that the symbol for nit nitrate is NO3. It has a charge of negative 1. So I'm going to use my teeter-totter to balance out these charges. Right now, I have a total of plus 2. My total in the negative column is negative 1, so I'm going to add on a whole other nitrate ion to make it a total of negative 2. Now those are balanced. So now I write my chemical formula. I write down all the symbols first, and, the and now I need to show that there are two nitrates. And so looking at this, I would need to say that there are two of these. But wait a second, looking at that, that looks like there are 32 oxygen, whereas I want to say that there are two nitrates. This is where I use the brackets in order to separate numbers or to show multiple amounts of the polyatomic ions. I need to include that polyatomic ion in a bracket. Okay, one more example to go through with you. Ammonium oxide. The first thing I hope you're noticing, this ends in an IDE. So that IDE would usually signify, unless it's one of those exceptions to the rule on the polyatomic ion list, that IDE signifies this is from the periodic table. So oxide used to be oxygen. We changed its ending and added IDE. So looking on the periodic table, oxygen symbol is O and it has a charge of negative 2. Here's the polyatomic ion, that one positive polyatomic ion. Its symbol is NH4 and that group has a charge of plus 1. So again, Balancing out those charges on my teeter-totter, I want to keep it even. I don't want any side to be heavier than the other. My total of positives have to equal my total of negatives. In this column, currently, I have a to total of negative 2. In this column, I have a total of negative 1. Those are not equal, so I know I'm going to have to add on more of those positives. So I'm going to add on another uh, ammonium ion, and now my total is positive 2. So yes, that teeter-totter is balanced at this point. So I'm going to write my symbols, NH4. I can't change that 4 because it needs to stay with it in order to be considered ammonium. And I want to say that there is 2 of all of the ammonium as signified by 1 here and one here, so that's a total of two. I only wrote one oxygen, so I don't. I could include the one, but in chemistry we don't include the ones, so I am just going to write it as NH4 with brackets all around it, 2O. And that's the formula for ammonium oxide.